Hello and welcome to another episode of Down to Disney, a monthly series where I pick a Disney animated movie and talk about its history and its impact on pop culture. This month's movie is 2009's Princess and the Frog. Princess and the Frog is best known for featuring Disney's first ever black princess. And while that might be what the film is best known for, it also represents a return to a lot of classic Disney traditions. For example, this was the first 2D animated Disney feature film for a while. Disney had gotten in the habit of making a lot of CGI animated films and they made the conscious decision to hand draw most of Princess and the Frog, although it contains some computer animated elements. This was also the first film since Beauty and the Beast that had characters speaking and singing for their roles, and it was the first film in a long time to have characters singing the songs from the soundtrack. For example, in movies like Brother Bear, there is a very memorable soundtrack, but none of the characters are actually singing the songs on the soundtrack. So a lot of the people who worked on Princess and the Frog were really excited about these aspects of the film because it was returning to a lot of the classic traditions of Disney animation. As you can imagine, there were a lot of A-list celebrities who were vying for the role of the first African-American princess in Disney history. Jennifer Hudson, Alicia Keys, and Tyra Banks were all considered for the role at one point in time. And it's even rumored that Beyonce was considered for the role, but was ultimately not offered it because she refused to audition. In the end, the role went to Anika Nani Rose, who is now a Disney legend for her performance as Tiana. There's a few personal touches that Anika Nani Rose lent to Tiana, namely that she is left-handed and she has dimples, just like Anika does. As with most films, a lot of other things changed with the characters and story along the way. Originally, Tiana's name was supposed to be Maddie, but they changed it to Tiana because they felt that the word Maddie sounded too much like Mammy, and if you don't know what a Mammy is, do a quick Google search and come back to me, okay? There was also supposedly a side job that she would have as a maid, but they cut that because of negative stereotypes and, you know, slavery. I think an often overlooked accolade of Princess and the Frog is that it also depicts maybe the first interracial relationship in a prominent Disney film. Prince Naveen I think is intentionally racially ambiguous and he specifically comes from a fictional country called Maldonia, but we can kind of guess his ethnic background because Maldonia is actually a combination of Malta and Macedonia. So the villain in this film, Dr. Facilier, is voiced by Keith David, who also lended personal attributes to the character, notably the gap in his two front teeth. Animator Bruce Smith described Dr. Facilier as the love child between Captain Hook and Cruella DeVille, and I don't know about you, but I can totally see that. The name Facilier, if you didn't know, comes from the word facile in Spanish, which means easy, which is meant to kind of play into the fact that he goes to people who want an easy out of their problems instead of putting in the hard work to get there. It's funny, the main sidekick of this movie, Lewis, who we'll talk about in a second, in the original story was meant to be a former human who went to Dr. Facilier for help. He went to him with the wish to be able to play multiple instruments and Dr. Facilier, of course, gave him that ability while also turning him into an alligator. I think this would have been a cool subplot, but I understand that it was kind of uh, unnecessary and that's why it ended up being cut from the story. More on Lewis, he was actually, and I think obviously named after the very famous jazz musician, Louis Armstrong, who he actually mentions during this song When I'm Human Again. So the lightning bug Ray I think has the most notable voice actor from Disney history. He's voiced by Jim Cummings who voices characters like Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, Pete from Goof Troop, Darkwing Duck, so many others I can't even name them all. And the role went to Jim Cummings because he actually used to live in New Orleans and could do a very convincing Cajun accent. While making this movie, John Musker and Ron Clements, by the way, were the directors. I didn't even mention that Ron and John directed Princess and the Frog. Of course, you've heard their names a million times in other Down to Disney episodes. They did the Little Mermaid, Aladdin, Treasure Planet. So they really wanted this story to be rooted in New Orleans history, Louisiana history, and Evangeline, Ray's love interest, has a strong basis in Louisiana history. The name Evangeline itself comes from a very famous poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. The poem is about a girl's search for her long lost love and it's held very dear by Louisiana descendants of the Acadian, also known as Cajuns. And if you were ever wondering, the star that Ray calls Evangeline is actually the planet Venus, which is named for the Roman goddess of love. Another prominent character that was based off of New Orleans history is Mama Odie. Mama Odie's character is based off of a very famous New Orleans storyteller named Colleen Sally. Colleen actually consulted on the film during its production, but passed away before it was finished. But her name is still in the credits. 
so that's nice. It's also said that Mama Odie's character is based off of the appearance of comedian Moms Mabley and a little bit of Yoda. One of the most famous Disney animators that worked on Princess and the Frog is Eric Goldberg, who is most famous, I think, for animating the genie in Aladdin, but he also did all of the animation for Lewis, and he did the Almost There animated sequence, well, stylized animated sequence for Almost There. He based this sequence on the art of Aaron Douglas, who was a very famous painter during the Harlem Renaissance. So like I mentioned in the beginning of the episode, Princess and the Frog is pretty famous for being a return to 2D animation for Disney, but that posed a few challenges for the animation department. Following the release of Home on the Range in 2004, the CAP system, which is an animation system I've mentioned in previous episodes of Down to Disney, was dismantled because the animation studio had basically canceled all future 2D productions after Home on the Range. For this reason, Disney went and started customizing features of their Toon Boom Harmony system, which was an animation software that was used at the Disney Toon Studios for many years. Disney Toon Studios, if you don't know, is a section of the Disney Animation Studio that's responsible for movies like Planes, Goofy Movie, and other straight-to-DVD releases. All of the character animation was done traditionally, drawing it on paper and then scanning it into a computer system, but all of the special effects were done in the Toon Boom Harmony system, and they used Wacom Cintiq tablets, which is exactly what it sounds like, you know, those tablets where you just use a stylus to draw. They were using those for the special effects. So because the animation studio was really looking for a return to very classic feeling Disney animation, they used two films from very early in Disney history to inspire the animation style for Princess and the Frog. These movies were Lady and the Tramp and Bambi. They used Lady and the Tramp to inspire the cityscapes for Princess and the Frog, and they used Bambi as reference for all of the bayou scenes in Princess and the Frog, since obviously it takes place more in nature than a lot of other Disney films. Princess and the Frog ended up being nominated for three Oscars. It had two songs nominated for Best Song and was also obviously nominated for Best Animated Feature for the year. It was the first movie since The Lion King to have two songs nominated for Best Original song and for reference it was almost there and down in New Orleans that were nominated and this was actually the first 2d animated movie that was composed by Randy Newman Randy Newman had of course worked on Toy Story movies and CGI movies but this was his first 2d animated project Princess and the Frog means a lot of things to a lot of different people I think it's extremely important for portraying the first african-american Disney princess and to me it represents the possibilities in diversity that Disney is able to put into their movies movies like Frozen are often criticized for not featuring enough characters of color. And this critique is usually met with people arguing that since the story of the Ice Queen comes from the country Norway, where most of its citizens are white, then of course all the characters in Frozen would be white. The thing about fairy tales is that typically, the person who put the story to paper was not always the first person to ever tell the story. Stories like Cinderella and Snow White and Beauty and the Beast and The Princess and the Frog come typically from oral tradition, which means that people were telling these stories verbally for years and years and years before they were officially written down. I've read versions of Cinderella that come from China, India, Europe, Africa, and so there's no real way to say where fairy tales originally came from because they're passed down in different countries and different cultures for thousands and thousands of years. What's interesting about The Princess and the Frog is that Disney took a fairy tale that has roots in many different cultures and decided to tell the story in New Orleans in America with a black main character. And that just goes to show you that any fairy tale can be told from any perspective, with any ethnicity cast of characters, with anything, anywhere, whatever they want to do. And that is what I think is really special about Princess and the Frog is that they took the opportunity to make it a very diverse story just because they wanted to. <laughs> Tiana is an incredible character that kids can look up to for her perseverance and hardworking nature. And while Princess and the Frog, I think, is getting more notoriety nowadays, it actually, I think, wasn't super well received in 2009. I think the reviews were kind of mixed. People today kind of don't love that the characters were frogs the entire movie, but I think it's getting more and more recognition in the parks, on the cruise lines, 
in fan culture and I think that's really special and exciting to see happen. I would love for more of Princess and the Frog to be in the parks. I know I am a big proponent of changing Cafe Orleans into Tiana's restaurant because it's in Orleans Square and it would be so perfect. I, like I said, this movie is really important to people for a variety of different reasons. I shared my reasons for loving it so much and I would love to hear why you love Princess and the Frog in the comment section below. I know that this movie has been requested for so long so I hope I gave you some information that you didn't originally know about Princess and the Frog. Let me know what you thought of this episode of Down to Disney in the comments below and of course give me suggestions for what movie you want me to cover next month on Down to Disney. And thank you as always for watching and I'll see you guys real soon. Bye!